He's Kyle. And this is Justin. And this, and this is, is Dudes, Dudes and Dingers. Dingers. Jeff Smith was a perfect example of a guy who could have benefited from maybe more in player development, not necessarily from the coaches who had access to him on a daily basis, but some of the tools that they use today. They talked about Jeff, Jeff Smith's biggest trade or biggest value was some of the velo he brought to the table, but he didn't have a put away or secondary pitch. Yeah. Now you've got guys using Edutronic cameras and Rapsodo to understand spin and how they can develop those secondary pitches, not over a two to four year span, but over a two day, two week span because they've got that consistent feedback and can make those real time adjustments. Yeah, he was quoted in the article as saying, I spend most of my time uh, time trying to develop a secondary or a third pitch so that I could complement the breaking ball or right. complement the heater. Yeah. So, and you got guys who literally spend their entire off seasons and or work on some of that stuff in season because the information they have is so prevalent to give them that opportunity. Yeah. Things like Rapsodo, TrackMan, Edutronic cameras are huge for pitchers now. Where when they do try things, they can see how their pitchers are tunnel, uh, how their pitches are tunneling, how they're getting spin on the ball, kind of changing up to deceive hitters. And not to mention, like velo is one thing, but now that you have spin, does velo up in the zone play better than velo low in the zone? Yeah. Which could have been an adjustment that maybe he could have stuck to his fastball in more situations, yeah. but placement and kind of pitch selection um, was more ideal up in the zone because if he had higher spin rates yeah. or, or lower spin rates. Ultimately though, I think it came down to an arm injury, right? Shoulder surgery. Yeah. As most guys do when they're known for velo too. That yeah. was another point in the article, right? Like if you're known to be a guy who threw gas, like you're showing up to show that you can still throw gas every yeah. day. Sometimes that leads to some of the injuries that can hurt your career just as much as not being able yeah. to develop that put away or secondary pitch. Yeah. On top of that, trying to figure out what you got going on and trying different things, bam. Yeah, Shoulder's so all four gone. guys, provide really unique examples. Um, I think all four guys really point out that even today's day and age, the subjective, scout, the subjective side of scouting and what they're able to bring to the table is still extremely valuable because you know, really with two of these guys, maybe three of these guys, even with more information on the measurables, it was their immeasurables that made them successful at the next level. Yeah. I think it went into a guy, Hank Sargent, who is now with Jet Sports Management, where he was really good at correlating and figuring out players' experiences um, and started weighting tools specific to what he was looking for. And he ended up doing a great job with some of the correlations that they drew to the players that he selected it ended up being awesome. Yeah, he was able to take not only what he saw with his eyes, but also say, like, okay, in catching, I'm more concerned around does the guy have the ability to frame pitches and kind of show – you know, his strengths on the defensive side of the ball, I don't really care if he runs a fast or slow 60. Therefore, they don't hold even weight in the yeah. 2080 scale. And he was one he was one of the only ones that they mentioned in the article that really got outside that comfort zone of the 45 to 65 grading where he would give yeah. guys, guys scores and use more of that scale. 